Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we learn to be a better programmer. And in this video, we're gonna talk about composition. Before we get started, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. Okay, so in the last video, we talked about abstract classes and we talked about how limiting it, they can be because we can't extend from multiple uh, super classes, okay? But say, for example, we want to, we have a queen chess piece that is the composition of a bishop because it moves along a diagonal and the composition of a rook because it moves vertically and horizontally, okay? We could implement a custom strategy for each piece, but we, if we come across this composition of a bishop and a rook for a queen, uh, we could reuse the functionality that we wrote for the rook strategy and the bishop strategy to compose the queen, okay? So we're gonna see what that looks like in this video. All right, so I have this rook and then I have a pawn. Let me just create another class really quick called bishop. And then I'm just going to have it extends from abstract chess piece. And then I'm also just going to generate that matching constructor and then get rid of that name parameter. And I'm just going to say bishop. Bishop is the name. All right, awesome. Now, so I'm going to create a new Java class and it's going to be an interface and it's going to be called move strategy face. So inside of this, we're going to say uh, list uh, string, and we're going to get call it get valid moves. All right. So so say uh, a user, for example, doesn't know what moves a piece can make. We want to be able to return a representation of those moves for that user, and that's what this uh, method is going to be. All right. So. An interface is just a template of what functionality we expect to exist inside of classes that um, implement that interface, okay? So you don't provide functionality in an interface, but you provide what the methods are supposed to look like, okay? So if I wanted to uh, implement this interface in the Rook class, I could say implements, move strategy i face awesome and we get a nice little squiggly line here and we say implement methods and i say get valid moves and then instead of returning null i would say list return new array list okay all right okay so that's all i wanted to do for uh get valid moves for a rook so for a bishop, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say implements move strategy I face, and then I'm going to uh, implement the methods. Say OK, and then I'm just going to say return new array list. All right. Now I'm just going to create another Java class called Queen, and then inside of the Queen, it's going to extend abstract chess piece, and then it's also going to implement the move strategy I face. Okay, and then I'm going to create a new method, and then I'm also going to implement the constructor as well. Okay, and we also want to create two fields. We're going to say rook, rook, and we're going to say bishop, bishop. Okay, and then inside of here, what we're going to say is this dot rook is equal to new rook of color. And then this dot bishop is equal to new bishop dot color. Okay? So how do I create get the valid moves for a queen? So what I can do is I can say array list of string is equal to uh, moves is equal to new array list. And then I can say moves dot add all from this dot rook dot get valid moves. And then moves dot add all of this dot bishop dot get valid moves. Okay, and then return moves. Awesome. So that's how we were able to compose the queen's move strategy from a rook and a bishop. Okay, so how can we prove that this worked the way we wanted it to? Okay, so if I went to, so if I went inside of here and I said collections dot singleton of rook I'll just import that and then inside of bishop I did the same thing collections.singleton of bishop 
And then, so inside of our main method, if I said queen queen is equal to new queen of uh, the name is queen, oops, and the color is black. And then I said system dot out dot print line queen dot get valid moves. All right. So what we are expecting here is we're expecting to see that we're getting a rook and a bishop. So we composed not only a rook, but also a bishop as well. Okay. And one more thing that we can also do is I can just say um, move strategy I face as the type. And then I can create another public static void print moves. And then I can take gain a move strategy and then move strategy I face. And then I can just say system.out.println move strategy I face dot get valid moves. And then here I can say main dot print moves queen and then see what happens. And there we have it. So it printed out rook and bishop the same as well. Okay? So the importance of an interface is that we can compose functionality. Right? And, and interfaces also describe the methods that we expect to call. So for example, if even though we don't know explicitly what type, what concrete type this move strategy interface is, we always know that it has is going to have a method called get valid moves. And that's because this get valid moves is defined inside of the interface. And so Java expects that whenever something, whenever a move strategy I face is used, there's always going to be a get valid moves method implemented in that class. Okay, so that's all I want to say about interfaces, and they're an extremely useful part of Java that uh, enable a lot of flexibility and code reuse um, in object-oriented programming within Java. Okay, so if you like the video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. All right, thanks.